It's been about a year since the world first met David Bennett. Here, the man seems to be weakly singing. He was strongly recovering, 37 days into being the first person to have a xenotransplant, simply the first to get a genetically modified pig's heart. The procedure was considered an early success with no rejection, sitting up singing, watching the Super Bowl. But doctors were shocked and loved ones were saddened when things quickly turned. Bennett's heart was swelling was and failing. Awesome. He died 60 days after the surgery. We spent the last full year trying to figure out what happened, and I'm not sure we're there yet. We did see an activation of a, of a virus that's only a pig virus that didn't infect Dave, but it certainly seemed to infect his new heart. Dr. Bartley Griffith surgically transplanted the pig heart. He updated Scripps News on their progress since the experimental operation. Among them, developing new, more sensitive tests after initial ones missed a virus in the donor pig's heart. They've also learned more about the body's immune response in Bennett's case. And it gave us hope that uh, with a little adjustment on the immune suppression, maybe a little less sick patient, we might do better. And so that's what we're proposing right now. That does not mean a second transplant soon. Medical teams have to go through research, ethics committees, and logistics. The biotech company behind the genetically modified hearts is building a facility hoping to meet FDA standards to make more quickly. Scientists are also studying baboons with pig heart transplants meantime to learn about how long immune suppressing drugs would be needed to prevent longer term rejection. And Dr. Griffith and team will have to get the FDA's okay to do another procedure. Meanwhile, popping up in hospitals across the country, a few dozen transplant teams are using another futuristic approach. This one, nicknamed Heart in a Box. Surgeons like Dr. Ben Briner are implementing the device that's using warmth instead of ice to keep a donor heart viable for longer. It has a gas exchanger that does the work of the lungs. It has a pump that circulates blood through the heart. It has uh, various ports where we can sample blood and give medications into the system. So it's all self-contained and portable, which is uh, important, but it also builds on technology that we use every day. So tell me a little bit about the significance of time, specifically in heart surgery. Time is always really important in any form of transplant, and in heart transplant, it's even the most pressing. So we really only have four hours from the time we take the heart out of the donor to the time we restore blood flow to the heart in the recipient. Meaning, before heart in a box, doctors were stuck traveling no more than 90 minutes in each direction. This gets rid of that. It's also allowing more donor hearts. Before, hearts could only come from brain-dead patients whose hearts were still beating. In donors who were not brain-dead, doctors had to wait five minutes after the heart stopped cardiac death, usually too long for it to be usable for transplant. And while upcycled hearts and genetically altered pig organs might feel more like Frankenstein, the innovation could fill a growing need. Last year, more than 5,000 patients were added to the heart transplant waiting list. Already in 2023, those numbers are up nearly 40%. Lindsay Thies, Scripps News, Chicago.